So I will just dive right in, given the uh, short time that we have here today. Um, and really, the focus of this discussion is going to be on a database of material properties that I've developed uh, based on metal organic frameworks. And so metal organic frameworks or MOF, just MOFs, just so that everybody knows, are composed of these discrete molecular building blocks, really an inorganic node and an organic linker or set of linkers that stitch together to form these crystalline lattices like this example you see here. They're highly porous, highly crystalline, have a high degree of synthetic tunability, and depending on the building blocks you choose, you can tailor their properties for a particular application of interest. So that's why people have gotten really interested in them, especially from the machine learning side. And so with this being said, there are many metal organic frameworks and related materials that have been synthesized and virtually unlimited more that can be proposed. And so naturally uh, what we did was constructed a database that I'm calling the quantum MOF or QMOF database, which contains computed quantum mechanical properties for about 20,000 of these metal organic frameworks and coordination polymers, which are just non-porous analogs of these metal organic framework structures. Um, I should mention that we have your typical host of geometric and electronic structure and energetic properties of these materials, which you can certainly check out. In addition to having various computed properties at multiple levels of theory, uh, which I think is increasingly important as well. Uh, of course, with this database, you can do many things, like you can train machine learning models to, for instance, predict band gaps uh, at various levels of theory, which is just one example that I'm showing here. And of course, you can do many similar types of machine learning studies as well. And I think really the success story here with something like the quantum off database really boils down to community efforts, right? So of course, one person like myself or even one group can't really just, of course, ex you know, discover all the amazing things that are out there. And metal organic frameworks in particular, I and others have shown that if we just use typical featureization methods and machine learning algorithms made for, let's say, solid state inorganic materials, they're naturally not the best for these metal organic framework structures. So really what we need are community efforts and really creative folks who can design new machine learning algorithms tailored specifically towards this class of hybrid organic inorganic materials. And that's what these databases like the quantum off database allow people to do. And so here I'm just highlighting two brief examples on transformer based models that were really developed using a lot of the data in the QMOF database. And so where I wanna conclude with is just on some comments about accessibility challenges. And I actually think when we think about access to materials data, I think we're doing a great job about making sure that people can easily and fairly access uh, computational data. So I think we're doing a great job there. But one subtlety that I think we can do better on is really improving our communication and the way in which we address inherent model limitations in computational materials databases, really to narrow that a theory experiment divide that I'm sure many of us are well aware of. So when we construct a computational materials database, there are many limitations, right? We have inherent curation biases. Uh, of course, the structures in the databases might be biased by the materials that other experimentalists have studied before, or maybe by the size of the material. Maybe you want small ones that can really improve the rate at which your calculations succeed, or maybe the ones that don't fail are electronically simple. Really at the end of the day, there's a bias there and we wanna be able to better communicate that and address those biases. And here is just a sample uh, dimensionality reduction picture from a nice paper from Brent Smith's group, simply highlighting that one database naturally doesn't span all of chemical space, of course. There's also structural limitations. For instance, oftentimes in computational materials databases, the structures themselves are lacking disorder uh, for the sake of computational simplicity. And we should think about how we might be able to better account for that both in the databases themselves and in machine learning models, whether that be things like alloys or amorphous solids. Additionally, due to challenges with X-ray diffraction, uh, it can be very difficult to ensure that the structures themselves have the appropriate location and number of things like counter ions or protonation, like whether it's a H or an OH or a water. And either the materials themselves with this disorder or partial occupancies will have to be removed from the database or I can guarantee if you go on any database of metal organic frameworks or even solid state materials like the materials project itself, you will find materials that are not charge balanced appropriately because of these kinds of issues. And of course, then all the quantum mechanical properties downstream can be affected as well. And while this may be a small fraction of cases, we obviously want the best data we can possibly get. Additionally, 
there's obviously questions about defects too that we want to incorporate. So to really just conclude this, of course, there's also theoretical limitations, which we need to make clear to our experimental colleagues. So with that, um, I want to thank you for listening. I'll just briefly highlight that the database is available to explore in the materials project as an interactive web app. This is something that was enabled by MP Contribs, which lets users, even outside of the materials project infrastructure, contribute data and create these really interactive web interfaces as part of the materials project infrastructure. So I definitely encourage you to check it out if you have a data set you think would be great uh, to interface with the materials project. Thank you.